and welcome to Sky TV from uh, SCI 2019 Scientific Sessions here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here to talk about the Sky classification scheme for cardiogenic shock, which was released about two days ago, and we've had a couple of presentations here so far. I'm joined here, my name is Dr. Srihari Naidu, I was the chair of the document, with Dr. David Barron, who is the co-chair of the document, Dr. Sh Shelley Hall, who's a heart failure specialist, and Dr. Cindy Grines, president-elect of SCAI. So let's start this off with you, Dave. Um, okay. What was the impetus for this document, and how do you see it being used? Why, why, why all the uh, excitement at this session? Well, so thank you, Harry. So this is something that started about two years ago, when a lot of us got together and realized that we all knew what shock was, but there were a variety of different forms, and there was quite Quite a difference between patients who were critically ill with shock and those who had just early shock. And since none of us had a common language, we thought that Sky would be the perfect forum to really make that common language. I think that that's where the, uh, the document will be most helpful in letting everybody talk the same way about the patient. Very good. And from the heart failure standpoint, we were very eager to uh, partner with heart failure. So how do you see it used in your field, and why is it so important for the heart failure specialist to yeah, congeal thank around you. this? I really enjoyed being part of the document, and I see it really in two realms. In the heart failure community specifically, we all think we know what shock is, but recognize that there are various varieties from, oh no, don't do anything, to perfect candidate for transplant or VAD. But I think the bigger range is for the general cardiologist community and that is the recognition early the intervention far earlier than we're doing right now and and the, the earlier transfer mm -hmm. because the reality is is most patients by the time advanced therapies are considered it's too late right and Cindy from an interventional standpoint why, why are interventionalists need to you know kind of lead the charge here well, I think a lot of times the shock patients come to the interventional cardiologist, they're transferred from outside hospitals, and as Shelley mentioned, they're in dire straits. Often they've been in the midst of cardiogenic shock for 18 to 24 hours. And I think uh, uh, the awareness, particularly the classification where you have A, patients at risk of cardiogenic shock, will help alert general cardiologists mm -hmm. to watch out for certain signs and transfer right. them very, very early. Yeah, I think one of the key parts of the document really is that we tell people what they need to look for. Physical exam findings, biochemical markers. So inherently we we'll tell people that they do have to check lactate, they do have to check hemodynamics, the right heart cath has to go in. We talked at a recent session that it's not going in routinely, so we're kind of giving a sense that this is what we think the consensus opinion on how to treat these patients is. What do you think? Where do we go from here? Will this be, will this be taken up by the community? Well, I certainly hope, hope so as a heart failure doctor. I think getting the language down is first so that we can all speak the same language. Right. Then we can truly start to study it mm -hmm. and we can start to educate through this document. I, think I, I agree that uh, you know trying to get commonalities in terms of treatments too because, for example, the NCDR suggests that only 30% of cardiogenic shock patients are receiving a, a SWAN. I agree. I, I think as well a key part is the definition of deterioration. Highlighting the fact that when the patient starts to deteriorate, it is fundamentally a different stage and really important. Don't just sit on it when that happens, lest they go on to an E and extremis where very few patients are saved. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing nice is that because you can go up and down this, I think it's going to be very key that uh, this happens 24-7. So a patient is at 3 a.m., if they go into D, maybe we'll have evidence that you need to do something there. You don't wait till 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. till people start rounding. So very much hoping that this will change how we look at shock uh, as a whole and, and, and put a little fire under us to, to move forward quicker. I think it can further um, our research planning. You know, the reality is, is if you look at all the shock trials that are out there, we're not really bumping the needle at all in survival. And I think it's because we've been treating everything. And if we can truly utilize this as defining the types of shocks that we can do trials on, right. then we can determine the right interventions. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. If you look at the uh, cause of mortality in cardiogenic shock, it's often those patients who had cardiac arrest and they die of anoxic right. encephalopathy. Right. And we're not ever going to impact that by treating their heart. Yeah, yeah it would be really nice to get data sets, and I think this is the next step, uh, of across the board, different devices, different types of patient populations, and seeing what may work here. Uh, rather than all fighting amongst ourselves on what might work across the board, maybe it's a little bit more uh, nuanced than that, and, and this is the first stage in that process. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. I think there's more to come. And I want to thank Sky TV for the opportunity.